Out of curiosity, man, um, why do you think Tupac was recording songs so fast when he was on Death Row? Wow, that's 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 a good one. Um, so a lot of people over the years have um misstated the facts in regards to why Tupac was doing that because you know a lot of the information that was that was available wasn't available to you know most of the people that were even around him at at that time. So people were talking about you know um, Tupac was you know. He was going to leave Death Row. Like I said, we already discussed the fact that he wasn't with Death Row. He wasn't actually signed to Death Row. There was no real need to really need to leave. So, um, you know, Tupac at that particular time, when you go back to Me Against the World, you would see that they didn't really have any songs left over from that period in time when he was doing. Um, they probably had a few, but not as many as they did when he came to Death Row. You know, Tupac being under having recorded three more albums for Interscope, basically Tupac um, probably should have only recorded around 40 songs, you know what I mean, when you deal with a three album situation. Um, but he recorded upwards of 150 songs, if you will. So from that perspective, um, that just goes to show you that he was in a different mindset. And I'm going to tell you the reason and the facts behind that mindset. Um, when Tupac left prison before Tupac came to death row, right? Um, what people don't understand is they didn't know whether Tupac was going to agree to um, be under the same umbrella when, you know, Interscope being the distributor of death row, right? So it all worked hand in hand. So they weren't sure whether Tupac was going to agree to come and record under the death row banner, right? So what they did was, you know, to, to see if he would do that, when they went to see him in prison, they needed confirmation of what he was going to do. And so when when they went to, to the prison, um, they needed that information, but they needed him to agree to, hey, you know, we would do that. So this piece of paper right here, this is the, the copy of the, the original uh, document that he signed with Suge basically stating all of the things, the conditions that would then be entered into a contract, if you will, right? And so... By him signing this, now it's confirmation, okay, cool, he's agreed to do it, right? Um, so when you deal with that fact, that's fact number one. So now we have confirmation from Tupac as to, yeah, he agrees to it. But once he agrees to it, all of these things that he agreed to in, in that agreement, basically, it didn't happen. But there was one clause in there that was very, very important that Tupac believed in his heart would happen. And it basically says that, Suge Knight would basically, um, uh, basically, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, Suge Knight would basically have a contract uh, set up with Death Row Records for Tupac to sign. And that agreement contained some of those elements, right? But once that was done, then the real paperwork began. And this is what I tried to explain to everybody, right? So no matter who wanted Tupac out of jail or who they say, you know, at that time, Got Tupac out of jail. We know the facts behind that, and I'm going to get into that just a teeny bit just to show you and your, and your viewers. So, okay, so now the real paperwork happens. This is on that paperwork right here. This agreement right here is on September 15th. So after that happens, they say, okay, he agrees to it. So now the money that they use or the money that they uh, added up to get Tupac out of jail came from Me Against the World. Remember, Me Against the World was number one while he was in prison. Right. Beat out Bruce Springsteen in the whole nine yards, right? So they calculated, it was very it was a calculated move. So they calculated that, they said, okay, cool. You know, the bail is, you know, 1.4, whatever. And remember when Tupac was trying to get out of jail, first, he was denied bail. So most people ask the question as to, well, why didn't Interscope just, you know, get him out? You know what I mean? He was denied bail. He had to appeal that situation in order to get out of jail, right? And so once they found out that, you know, they won the appeal, he could now get out because they didn't want him to get out of jail, actually. So now the real paperwork comes in. And so when he, when he, when, when they come, they come and they say, they send David Kenner back to it and see, you're going to see how, what I'm going to show you right now, how the paperwork changed when it came time, once he agreed to that initial situation. So in the, in the second time, when, when they went back to see him, so they came back and they had, this paperwork right here. See how it changed? See, this is that legal and binding thing. Right. Right. This is the stuff that when you handle your business and you covering all the P's, the Q's, and dotting your I's and crossing your T's, 
This is what they bring to the table, right? Hmm. So now, what you got to understand is, in dealing with this fact, on this situation and dealing with Tupac, you got to understand, Tupac had to, had to. He would have not gotten out of jail if he did not sign this agreement. This agreement right here contains a power of attorney. So he was granting Interscope, not death row. They don't mention Suge Knight in here. Once again, I told you that Interscope Atlantic them paid his bail. This is the bail agreement. This is the actual agreement that Tupac had to sign. But most importantly in this agreement, there was one paragraph that was more important than anything that you possibly could ever think of or see in Tupac's career that most people didn't know at the time. So that's why I say a lot of people came out with misinformation. And, and, it, and it says, and it says, and I'm going to read, in connection with such assignment, Shakur and ODG Records, and that's out the gutter records, so most people didn't know, Tupac was Suge Knight before Suge Knight was Suge Knight. He had his own record label, which was out the gutter records. That's what Me Against the World was released under. So he had his own label already. Let's be clear about that. But it says, um, in connection with such assignment, Shakur and ODG Records hereby each grants to Interscope a power of attorney irrevocable and coupled with an, an interest to execute on the behalf of Tupac Shakur and ODG Records any and all such documents necessary to effectuate such assignment. Powerful. So that basically says that until they got their money back, right, they were able to do whatever they needed to do with documents, agreements, and so on and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? That's the most powerful thing in all of this in dealing with death row. So when you deal with that fact, that's the reason why Tupac was working so tirelessly to get it done because Tupac wanted his power of attorney back. He knew what he signed, but everybody else didn't know what he signed. So then you get to, okay, well, you know, he was, he was under death row. Like I said, I told you, no, 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 once again. And so on the other spectrum of what that was and what was really going on, check this out. I'm going to show you and read to you right now how they never intended Suge Knight, it never was intended for Tupac even to ever even have a contract with Death Row. And it says, in this agreement right here, this agreement, this is another agreement, uh, uh, this, this, this is the, the bail guarantee, right? The corporate guarantee, this is a picture of the corporate guarantee, but on the last sentence of this agreement, basically, it reads, this is from Interscope Records, right? right? So on the last page of this agreement, it basically reads, it says, Listen to this. So we, we never have this conversation again. So when people look at the art of dialogue, they know that you're coming with the truth and the facts. We're going to put an end to all of the speculation right here, right now. Check this out. It says, except as specifically modified herein, the recording agreement shall be unaffected and shall remain in full force and effect. What agreement is that? That's the agreement with Interscope Records. It was never to change. Tupac was only under the banner of death row. Like I said, death row didn't even cut royalty checks. Interscope did. The marketing and promotion came from Interscope. All of those things. So like I said, at the end of the day, you know, you have it here, Art. That's the reason why Tupac was working so tirelessly to get out of that situation. Furthermore, once again, most people didn't know this, that Tupac had an $80 million deal with Warner Brothers. It was a multimedia deal. He had an $80 million deal waiting on the table over at Warner Brothers that Quincy Jones helped to facilitate. As you can see, the relationship, Kadada, Tupac, Quincy, already had Quest Records, already doing his thing through Warner Brothers, and that whole thing and how it's tied in, Will Smith, you know what I mean? That Warner communication, that whole umbrella. So that was the situation. So that's why Tupac worked so tirelessly. He was trying to get his rights back and his, his, the authority to be able to do the things that he needed to do. And just so you know, like I said once again, man, you know, these paperwork, these paper, these documents are actually signed by Tupac and all of the people that were involved in this situation. And it mentions nothing about death row. Like I said, facts.